Hi guys, good morning. It's Friday morning, September 11th, which of course means it's the 19th anniversary of a sad and tragic day for so many Americans and people across the world. I didn't come on to really talk about that because it kind of goes without saying. I told myself today I'm not going to get online on any platform and say things like never forget because it's trite and to me, um, like redundant. Does that mean the same thing? To me, it's like, obviously we'll never forget, nor should we. And if somebody was to forget, there's something wrong with them because it was one of the most cataclysmic things to ever happen on American soil. But, um, I really just came on to say hi. I just did my makeup. I think the lighting in here, even though I'm on my porch, is weird. I'm very concerned now about this thing on my nose, which I covered up with, um, let's do a product placement here. Where the fuck is it? Now I can't find it. My makeup table's a mess. But I finally invested in some Tarte Shape Tape because I've avoided under eye concealer um, forever because it tends to settle in my little lines and I never think it does anything. But the Shape Tape is worth the money. So anyway, I covered up that little blemish, that little mark, that tag, that whatever it is with that. But this morning it was very red and I definitely feel it when I play with it, which I shouldn't do. And I'm nervous about it because of the big, you know, the big C word. Um, whoops, I'm all smudgy now. So I got to add that to the list of fucking doctors. Sorry for all my swearing. I'm in a very bad mood about something, which I will get to in a moment. Um, yeah, so now I gotta go to a dermatologist and get that checked out. And maybe frozen or burned off or whatever. So I'm supposed to work today 2 to 10, but I can't go to work until I finish this training. Well, I mean, it's like a retraining module. Um, I was supposed to work yesterday 4 to 10, but because I worked the overnight the night before and I was completely exhausted, I took a nap, woke up to my manager saying, you know, like with an hour notice, um... You, you can't come in. You're not even allowed to work until you do this this module online. And it, um, because the company got taken over by a different company, all of the passwords and stored information has been changed. And of course, I can't find my username or password. So that took a couple hours yesterday to try to get online and do it. And I couldn't. I got to a certain point and then I needed more information from a different person in the company whom I've been waiting to hear back from. So I'm supposed to work today, two to 10. It takes an hour and a half to two hours to do this training module online at home. And I suck at anything technological or computer really, which is why I just filmed these videos with my freaking Android. Um, so I'm just a little distraught because I'm missing out on hours and money today. But you know, part of the way I relax is actually to do makeup, believe it or not. Let me switch to a different type of lighting here. I'm so stiff and in so much pain from my back, but like I said before, I'm hoping to get an answer soon. It's it's very worrisome and it's very, it's a very lethargic feeling to live in chronic pain. You're just like tired all the time. Um, I've got a lot of dishes to do and oh, my eyes look tired today. I'm trying to find something with which I can remove this weird layer of glitter liner, which has now gotten on my top lid. It's not going to budge. And I have no Q-tips out here. And I guess it doesn't really matter. I didn't come on again to talk about makeup. I wanted to just say hello and wish everyone a good day and a day of remembrance and honor for those who lost their lives. Um, the victims of 9-11 who just thought they were having a normal, beautiful early fall Tuesday. I'll never forget the weather that day here. It couldn't have been a more beautiful day. Crystal clear skies, cool, no humidity, beautiful, you know, blue skies. And um, what I was doing that morning was recovering at home from my weight loss surgery. Oh God, that's another whole topic for another video. I wanna do a whole video on the pain of regain after weight loss surgery, which believe me, is possible. Um, I'm only about 15 to 20 pounds less right now than my top weight when I got the surgery. After which point I lost almost 90 pounds and over the past, what, 19 years now has come back. Anyway, that morning I was um, 
nursing kind of like a secondary infection, like a, a fever and kind of like a stomach flu um, while I was still recuperating from my incision and just getting used to having, you know, having had major abdominal surgery. My son was almost four. He was watching cartoons. My ex was upstairs. He's a, he was a New York City firefighter. So he had the day off. And so my mother, when I still had a relationship with her, called abruptly and just said, turn on the news, because my son was watching cartoons. Turned on the news, and what I saw, the very first frame was um, the, the upper floors and what looked like a small fire coming out of windows. And my first thought was, wow, that, that sucks for the firemen to have to deal with a fire that high up. You know, I thought to myself, I'll talk to Steve about it. That's my ex's name. My baby daddy. <laughs> um, I'm going to say, you know, how, how are you guys going to get up there? So he came down, took one look at the TV and was like, oh, fuck. You know, and he went upstairs and put on his bunker gear. And I said, where are you going? <laughs> and he said, where the hell do you think I'm going? And I'm like, but you're off, you know. And he, he didn't even answer me because, you know, it's, it's all hands on deck when you're a fireman or a policeman or any medical or emergency personnel, you get to where you need to go. So he went down there just before the second tower fell and I just watched the whole thing unfold, watched all the live coverage on the morning news shows. I think I was watching the Today Show when the first tower fell and it was just surreal. It was like watching a terrible movie. And it got so bad at one point, I actually thought because I had a fever that I was hallucinating the whole thing. So he stayed down there downtown for a long time, called a couple of times and wound up being down there for a couple of days. Came home, was in shock, didn't even really want to talk about it. I have some photographs of him getting out of his truck and just being covered in the white dust of that morning. And my son running up to him and him just saying, no, 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 get back, go back to mommy, stay away because of the toxic dust, which, you know, when I look back on it now, kind of had like the smell of death. You know what I mean? A lot of people died. That that dust was composed of a lot more than just the building, detritus and debris. So he took a long nap. I fed him. He went back and basically he stayed downtown long enough to be part of like the, the rescue mission which then got sort of aborted because very, very few people could be found or saved. So then he um, was sort of deployed to like the cleanup efforts and going through the rubble, which went on for weeks and weeks and weeks and months. Wow, <laughs> 10 minutes ago I said I'm not coming on to talk about 9-11, but I figured while I'm here, I would, I would say like, you know, that whole where were you when it happened type of thing. Luckily he wasn't injured. He lost a lot of people he knew. His brother also was a firefighter, and he pretty much lost his whole company, the company that was hit the hardest. I forget which house number it was, but it was in uh, Midtown, and Steve's company was in the Bronx, so that was, that's one of the, the other boroughs, you know, right near Manhattan, but he was kind of at a command center waiting to be told from his lieutenant and his chief, like, where to go next and stuff. And uh, it was just awful. And then in the weeks following, we went to some funerals of some firefighters we knew and prayed at uh, St. Patrick's Cathedral. And it was just awful. Anyway, um, I've been watching kind of the whole kerfuffle and like the, the increased drama surrounding the reaction channels and the muckbangers and, you know, Charlie Gold and Chantal and, and on program situation and DC Media Girl and now Shikara Transformations is brought into the mix. And man, it is like fucking messy. Um, I got a thought this morning that part of the reason I think people, especially fellow obese people, react so vociferously and vituperatively, there's two SAT words for you, to Chantal in particular, um, is that Maybe I should just speak for myself. As a fat person who's constantly concerned about body image and self-esteem and how I look and how I feel and my health and feeling like a failure and feeling like I'm trapped by food, I think Chantal represents a fear that a lot of fat people have that they're going to eventually lose control and wind up being that big. And the fact that Chantal 
doesn't seem to mind it and just does her own thing without apology, um, I think bothers people who just can't relate to it. Now, I'm not talking about her personality or her approach, which sometimes really is grating, but I also think that all the trolling she does is specifically because she knows she has a lot of haters, and it's almost like, well, let's give them something to watch, you know? Let's give them something to talk about, because there's no fucks given. And in a certain way, again, disclaimer, even though I don't really like her, um, I respect people that don't give fucks. You know what I mean? Like, at my age, 54, I'm classically not supposed to give a fuck about anything. And I still give too many. Let me light a schmook while I talk to y'all. Oh my god, it's hard to find anything. Did I do enough blending today? I don't know. I did the whole contouring and bronzer and highlighter and blush deal. And I put eyeshadow on under my eyes instead of my usual liner, and it's making my eyes red. So I'm waiting to hear from work, basically, as I waste time here. Because I have to do this online program. And I get paid for the time doing it. But if I miss work because they don't don't allow anyone in the homes because of it... Um, Then even though in a certain way I'll be happy for the time off, I won't be because I need money. It involves corporate compliance with like the Justice Center rules and stuff, which I find ironic given recent events in which I was extremely aware of Justice Center um, compliance because I was involved in advocating for the health and safety and well-being of our residents. And that's all I'm going to say about that. And in my opinion, that took a lot of balls for me to make myself uncomfortable and be hated by people because of doing the right thing. So, let's see, was that all I wanted to say about the drama? For the most part, I think it's immature. For the most part, I think it does represent a sense of the need in human nature to feel superior based on fear, based on lack of control. I think that when people think that they have the verbal upper hand, they just feel better about themselves. This whole business of you have no life or get a life, I don't subscribe to that because everyone has a life. Um, you might argue that people who don't work and make all their money from eating on camera don't really have a life because part of having a life is like having an outside job and responsibilities and maybe a, maybe a, a spouse or children or... I don't believe in shaming Yaba. I almost said Yama. YouTube Underground. I don't believe in this business of shaming her because she's a parent. I don't like DC Media Girl at all, but I don't believe in shaming her for how she looks or how her looks are perceived or her age. As a matter of fact, that's like pretty much my pet peeve on YouTube is that you're not supposed to have a voice or an opinion if you're over 40 or 50 or 60. I'm proud of my age. I'm proud of all the years behind me that have made me who I am today, which is a pretty strong... Um, person who's overcome a lot. I think that maybe when people say things like act your age, they just mean that maybe someone of a certain age should be above even gossiping. And that's probably true, but I don't believe in shaming DC media girl and calling her a granny. And, you know, I don't like her and I don't like her saying to Ilona, go fuck yourself. That really, really got my goat. I think of almost anybody on YouTube. I respect that woman the most because she's intelligent, well-spoken, insightful. She does reactions, but she doesn't judge or get nasty. She really tries to help. She's giving all kinds of free advice about nutrition and fitness and the things that have worked for her. And, um, you know, her gains, as we call them, you know, the muscular gains, because she works out and she cares about how she looks. And she looks a way that Maybe not everybody wants to look or, or not everybody can achieve because it takes a fuck ton of work, I can imagine. I don't even like taking a walk, let alone working out with weights and being a bodybuilder. I mean, that that is like major kudos to her, in my opinion. And she's married to this beautiful man and she's trying to get pregnant and she has a home and she has hobbies and she travels. So for anyone to get into this whole rhetoric about get a life is stupid. I, I've probably said it a couple of times in my time. Um, as far as the hypocrisy of fat people talking about other fat people, I think that anybody can have a right to have their say or their opinion. 
um, no matter if you're 100 pounds or 400 pounds, but at least own your own shit, own your own addictions, own your own issues. I try to do that. You know, I'm not a binge eater. I'm not a mukbanger. Um, I don't even consider myself a food addict, really. I think that, that my bad choices over the years have caught up with me in my post-menopause years and my thyroid disease years, which you can tell because check out the check out the balding spots. It's getting a little bit better. It's taking a lot of expensive supplements. I know I look around, I glance around furtively a lot. I hear a lot of noises outside because of the wind. And sometimes it sounds like um, things are falling outside. I have a lot of wind chimes and bird feeders and lawn furniture and whatnot. We had a huge thunderstorm last night, and uh, but it blew all the humidity away. And it's a beautiful, beautiful day today. And it's a sad day to remember how beautiful it was on 9-11 of 01. Um, yeah, so it's really wild what's going on on the YouTubes right now. Um, I'm not against reaction channels. I still watch some of them because I think they're insightful and, quite frankly, sometimes really amusing. Um, my latest obsession is Robin the Explorer because I just like his facial reactions and how he talks. And I love people with accents anyway. And I love how open and honest he is about his mental health issues. He um, has talked about having uh, paranoid schizophrenia. Um, other channels have talked about being food addicts or having binge eating disorder. I've talked about my alcohol addiction recovery and my body image issues. Um, you know, I don't show my body a lot. You guys have seen it when I've done my dishes with days, but I wear a torrid size three. I used to wear a two, which was an 1820. Now I'm in there 22, 24. Um, my general weight as an obese person runs between like 220 and 240. But in the past two years, I've gotten myself up to like 278. So that's my honest disclosure. Um, I feel bad for people that are over three or 400 pounds because I know how uncomfortable I am right now at my weight. So I can't imagine how uncomfortable it must be to be three or four or 500 pounds. You know, I don't agree with their food choices that got them to that point, but the fact that they still have channels and they go about their lives and they do what they want to do, um, even Amberlynn Reed, with her trying to rebrand herself and have a different type of vlogging or whatever, um, I think mukbangs are gross, whether someone's thin or fat. I just think they're gross. Just my opinion. I think it's weird to monetize an addiction um, I like to watch beauty channels. I like to watch, like I said, um, I used to watch YouTube Underground a lot more than I do now because this whole business of like going to, um, Canada to harass Foodie Beauty, uh, leaves a bad taste in my mouth, even if it's just a joke. Alex is shook. I find him harmless and just a little salty and tangy in a way that amuses me. I still watch Zachary Michael, no matter what he talks about, because I just find him funny and engaging. Um, even though he doesn't do reactions anymore, which I respect. Um, I feel kind of bad that people who have had hysterectomies, meaning Chantal and Amberlynn now, aren't respecting their health a little bit more. But again, look at me smoking. That's not me respecting my health. I try to be proactive. I try to go to my doctors. I try to listen respectfully when they tell me about my weight and blood sugar. I have prediabetes. Um... I fight bipolar. Um, I do get manic and depressed, even though I'm on Lamictal. I might have to talk to my nurse practitioner and get my dosage increased because um, mood stabilizers are something that have to be monitored and very often titrated upward. I don't like taking meds. I don't like taking pills. It makes me feel, feel very old in the morning when I take my thyroid meds, my metformin, my Lamictal, um, and aspirin, you know, for heart health. And I take very strong amounts of um, Tylenol for my back pain. I gotta go now, because I've been totally rambling. I'm at 20 minutes, and my camera's telling me I'm running out of space. So I hate to always get off here abruptly, but I'm going to now. So have a wonderful day, people. Say a thought and a prayer and a couple moments of silence for those who lost their lives on 9-11. I'll talk to you soon. Peace out.